This video covers a ongoing or currently developed situation which has history and links to similar events in the past. But for the purposes of this video, we will try to focus down onto the patterns that connect this current situation. And in later videos, I might be able to cover some of the historical aspects. And starting out, we'll look at an article titled Motive in Shooting of Bandidos MC Support Club Member, full video, March 7th, 2023. This is, of course, recent, and there has been multiple ac activities related to this sort of thing within these first few months of this year. Quote, Harris County, Texas, a former Harris County Precinct 4 Deputy Constable, was arrested and charged in connection with the deadly shooting last month. According to court documents, Aaron Grant shot and killed Jesse Metzger, who was riding a motorcycle along the North Freeway. According to investigators, the shooting happened just after midnight on January 27th. Now, in continuation... Coordinated Assassinations on the Banditos MC, April 15th, 2023, which of course would have been yesterday. And the event would have been the day before, I believe, or it was yesterday. Um, <clears throat> Huntsville, Texas, KR, KTRK. Law enforcement officers across two counties are trying to figure out whether shooting incidents that apparently targeted motorcyclists on I-45 North are not only linked, but also have outlaw biker gang ties. Now, notice the word gang there uh, is essentially the same word as group. It's just been converted into some ridiculous uh, stereotype nonsense, putting a stigma to the word. About 40 miles separate, one shooting from another, resulting in three people dead and two others injured between two scenes that unfolded Friday. Notice the location, Huntsville, Texas. That is important. So let's go to a map on Google. And Huntsville, Texas is along Interstate 45 which is a federal highway. It is directly between Houston and Dallas. Interestingly enough, Waco is directly between Fort Worth and Austin. And naturally, there are correlating instances of similar circumstances between the particular Bandidos group and shootings at towns that run along an international highway, directly connected to Dallas-Fort Worth. That is a pattern, or as I, I suppose you could call it a history of conduct as well. So let's look into this. Public hearing I-45 South Walker County. PX DOT, which is Texas Department of Transportation, is holding a public hearing to present proposed improvements along I-45 from the Walker-Montgomery County line to SH-19 in Huntsville. The proposed project widens I-45 to improve safety, reduce congestion, enhance freight mobility along the corridor. And this is from 2015. So these things have been planned, shall we say. Proposed improvements include replace existing main lane pavement with new pavement, widen to six travel lanes, three north and three south, with the center concrete traffic barrier instead of grass median. Notice that. They take away the grass median, and they put in a concrete traffic barrier. Now, if you can imagine, there are other possible reasons for them doing that, other than to keep people from crossing the grass median. And when we look at the other things they're doing, such as extend and replace drainage structures, we start getting closer to the overall concept of this video, and that is there are subterranean systems underneath these highways, and probably most international highways across the country. Replace all existing bridges, 
Add a new direct connection from northbound I-45 to northbound SH-19. Reconstruct ramp to current standard ramps to current standards. Reconstruct frontage roads and crossroads adjacent to new ramps and interchanges, so on and so forth. And it's got some contact information and stuff for es Espanol. <laughs> um, IH, okay, so this is a, a article from Yahoo Sports. It states, uh, IH-45 expansion project begins in Walker County. The Huntsville item, Texas. This is from June 30th, 2022. It states June 30th, road work for IH 45 widening project contracted by Williams Brothers Construction Company Inc. has begun. This closure and construction is a small part of a much larger $198,146,415 expansion for the interstate highway. It's a very specific number there. Kind of odd. Completion for this project is estimated to be in the summer of 2026. Public Information Officer for TX. Brian District Bob Caldwell said, This project started about four years ago, beginning at the Walker County line in the Public Information uh, Walker County line in the New Waverly area. This is just an extension of this project. It will start in Walker County and continue into Madison County then Leon County, and finally Freestone County. The end goal is to get three lanes in each direction from Houston to Dallas. We're practically the middle portion of the project. Starting on Monday, June 27th, and ending on Friday, July 22nd, the IH-45 southbound entrance between Smithard Drive and FM-1374 will be closed off for motorists. Caution signs will be placed in preparation to assist in cautioning the public of the upcoming road closure. Southbound entrance on the northern and southern end of the temporary closed entrance will still be accessible from southbound I-845 lanes, currently less leftmost turn lanes on the FM-1374 eastbound overpass, and the I-845 southbound fronted roads are closed in addition to I-845 southbound entrance. Southbound entrance near Robinson Creek Parkway is expected to be closed for three weeks because of shifting traffic on FM-1375, this leaving two lanes of traffic open, traffic open on I-845 in either direction during typical daylight hours. Daytime hours. Single lane is regularly closed at night time to make room for additional construction efforts. Cole said, we do anticipate the road to be closed for the entirety of the three weeks. It looks like the tropical weather we expect this weekend will be passing us, so we expect the contractor to be done within the allotted time frame. According to Caldwell, surrounding residents and traveling motorists are expected to benefit from the expansion through the alleviation of traffic currently experienced on the I-45 after widening efforts take place. Now notice the coded language there, which I'm not going to bother with at this juncture. So let's go ahead and look at a map of the construction project, alleged construction project for I-45. And even their map looks very strikingly to a railway. This is because most roads, as we can look on the surrounding roads that run around it, are very bendy and they go with the terrain. This map is showing an almost straight line, which is also wide and looks quite similar to metropolitan subways and other sorts of railway lines, which wouldn't be a problem when it's underground. Don't have to worry about terrain then. So in continuation, business groups stand to profit from controversial I-45 expansion, critics say. The Greater Houston Partnership spent about 10000 on social media advertisements in support of the controversial project last month. This according to Lucio Vasquez, August 3rd, 2021, from the Houston Public Media. Quote, Critics of controversial I-45 expansion plan blasted the project at a public meeting Monday afternoon, accusing powerful business interests of trying to profit off of the displacement of local communities. The I-45 North Houston Highway Improvement Project would widen I-45 from downtown north to Beltway 8 in an effort to enhance safety and mobility, according to a spokesperson with the Texas Department of Transportation. Now, I would bet that that safety and mobility has to do with an underground railway system, clandestinely in place, of course. But the project has come under fire from local activists and the Federal Highway Administration, which asked Texas DOT to halt the construction process in March due to civil rights concerns. A request that TX dot apparently ignored, prompting a second request from the federal agency in June. Molly Cook, a nurse and organizer with the group Stop Texas dot I-45, criticized TX dot's approach to public engagement during the public hearing on Monday and said that access to the survey is limited 
since it's only available online, effectively cutting access for those who may be most impacted, according to Cook. Isn't that interesting? It is very clear that there are two sides to this issue, Cook said. One side stands to benefit financially, and one side stands to lose their homes, or stands to lose major parts of their city that they know and love. The Greater Houston Partnership has spent thousands in support of the controversial plan as local officials and activists continue to push against the $7 billion project. <laughs> $7 project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> In an email to Houston Public Media, a GHP spokesperson said the project would enhance safety, expand transit options, improve air quality, and address flood mitigation and disaster evacuation needs. Notice that disaster evacuation needs. Maybe that's possibly for the bigwigs that want to avoid the nuclear holocaust and are building their underground railway system, which leads to possibly, who knows, maybe even underground vaults? Oh, ho, ho. GHP President and CEO Bob Harvey requested support for the project via an email sent to members in late July, claiming the proposed plan would attract new investment and economic development to Houston. The partnership requests your formal support of Texas DOT's continued funding for the NHHIP. The email read, your voice as members of the business community will send a clear signal that this project is supported in our region. Including in the email is a link to Texas DOT survey created by the State Transportation Agency in order to gauge public opinion, it's probably the juridic public, not the human public, regarding proposed transportation projects. One question focuses on the I-45 NHHIP, but critics say it turns a complex topic into a simplistic one. I want to reject a yes-no vote on something that is this important, that is this expensive. That is this monumental for generations to come. Cook said Monday, I want to die in Houston. I don't want to be a climate refugee. I don't want to have to work on my car, own a car, drive a car every single place that I go for the rest of my entire life. I want to live here happ ha happily with walkability, with a concern for the climate, with a concern for those who cannot afford to own cars. How interesting. Sounds like he's talking about an underground railway to me. Anyway, uh, GHP began running Facebook and Instagram ads in July, spending about 10000 on seven separate ads requesting support for the project, according to Analytics for Facebook. These July ads were shown on screen more than 520,000 times by the end of the month, and GHP began promoting new ads in support of the project on Monday. Critics say the GHP-backed advertisements were spreading in inaccurate information and slammed the proposed project for threatening to displace hundreds of families. I doubt it's hundreds of families. And I'm not surprised there. You have a corporation juridic entity that is spreading false information. What a surprise. And worse in air quality due to heavy construction and increased vehicle presence. This project limits Houstonians' choices instead of expanding them and it specifically and disproportionately limits choices for black and brown Houstonians. And Zoe Middleton, co-director of the House Housing Policy Nonprofit Texas Housers. Ugh. Most nonprofits are just more corrupt money laundering outfits anyway. In an email to Houston Public Media, a GHP spokesperson acknowledged that the expansion would impact several Houston communities and added that the plan has been modified in order to mitigate impacts to these neighborhoods. There's some coded language for you. In March, right after the federal government told TXDOT to pause the project, Harris County sued the agency under the National Environmental Policy Act, a federal law that mandates proper environmental consideration for all projects requiring federal action. But four months later, it was revealed that TXDOT was moving forward with the project despite the warning from the FHA, prompting the federal agency to gain Again, issue a letter telling the state to halt. Both Harris County and the city of Houston have provided alternate designs for their project, but those suggestions have gone unheard, according to Mayor Sylvester Turner. We do not intend to play their game, Turner wrote in a July statement. There is a right way to do it, and if it is done right, it can be transformational. Interesting wording. The Texas Transportation Commission is currently seeking public input on the project, probably juridic public, 
which the commission will consider when deciding whether to include it in the state's 2022 unified transportation program. If the project is not approved, Texas DOT could take the money raised for this expansion project and potentially use it elsewhere, including outside of the region, according to a spokesperson for the agency. That sounds like a threat to me. Several community members criticized TX DOT's take it or leave it position, as well as what they said was the agency's lack of transparency in relation to the expansion project. Well, no surprise, if they're building an underground railway. These are people that live here, people that deserve a say, said resident Matthew Chisari. For TX.2, then give a binary choice between what amounts to a tantrum from a billion dollar government agency. Either you have what we give you or you have nothing at all is pretty unacceptable. This, of course, most of it is obfuscation for what's really going on. I-45 South Walker County Project from the Texas Department of Transportation. The purpose of the project is to enhance freight mobility and address congestion along the I-45 corridor. The project limits are from 0.2 miles south of the Montgomery line to 0.3 miles north of SH-19 with a length of 12.6 miles. No additional right-of-way is required. <laughs> I don't like how they make that statement. The project is not yet funded, but it is estimated for letting in December 2015. Construction is anticipated to begin in early 2016 and is expected to last three years with an estimated cost of 240 million now notice those dates there with 2015 that is the same year that the incidents happened in waco mind you with the expansion of i-35 now from community impact by sean arage from march 17th 2023 it states i-45 expansion project will proceed after tx dot federal government reach agreement. Uh, I hate it when they put that comma instead of an ampersand, but whatever. The controversial project to widen I-45 between Beltway 8 and downtown Houston took a major step forward March 7th when the Federal Highway Administration announced it had reached a voluntary agreement with the Texas, Texas Department of Transportation on how to move forward. The FHA FHWA has been investigating the project, known officially as North Houston Highway Improvement Project, since 2021 for alleged violations of the Civil Rights Act. The project, expected to displace more than 1,000 residential units, yeah, hundreds, huh? 344 businesses, five places of worship, and two schools, has raised concerns that it unfairly harms communities of color, which are over represented in the areas that would have to be raised to make room for expanded highway. With a voluntary agreement in place, the investigation has ended, and TXDOT has been given permission to move forward with the design and construction of the project. This agreement moves forward an important project, responds to community concerns, and improves the North Houston Highway Improvement Project in ways that will make a real difference in people's lives. wonder which people those are. expect they're juridic. Through this agreement, the community will have a great voice in the design and throughout the project's life cycle. Yeah, it doesn't sound like they've had a great voice up until now. Probably won't change either. FHWA Administrator Shailen Bott said in a statement, We have lifted the pause, and with FHWA oversight, TX DOT may proceed with design and construction. With an estimated cost of $9 billion, the NHHIP has been under development by TX DOT since 20. 2002. It involves adding four managed express lanes on I-45 from downtown Houston to Beltway 8 North, as well as rerouting I-45 to be parallel with I-10 on the north side of downtown and west of I-69. Other elements of the project include bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure along frontage roads and cross streets, new trails par parallel to bayous, and flood control elements such as detention ponds and pump stations. It also would bring the highway up to federal safety standards according to TX DOT. Terms of agreement. The voluntary agreement provides enforceable timelines that would be monitored by the FHWA related to design, construction, stakeholder engagement, affordable housing initiatives, right of way acquisition and flood mitigation, according to a March 7 news release from TX DOT. Regarding the reduction of the project footprint, the voluntary agreement does not provide specifics, instead calling on TX DOT 
to evaluate reasonable opportunities to reduce the project footprint in ways that would not compromise the integrity and functionality of the purpose and need of the project. Some vague language, but they know what they're talking about. During the final design of each segment, TX Dot must evaluate any changes from its previous plan that reduce the amount of right of way needed and displacements required, especially related to multifamily developments. Part of the agreement, TX Dot has 90 days to complete a survey of all non residential businesses and organizations displaced by the project to make sure they receive relocation services. The agreement also lays out requirements for two specific affordable housing projects managed by the Houston Housing Authority that will be demolished Clayton Homes and Kelly Village. TX Dot has already acquired all unoccupied Clayton Home units, and the agreement gives the agency permission to move forward with the relocation of the community's remaining residents. In addition to relocation compensation, TX Dot is also required to provide $30 million to support. Affordable housing initiatives in neighborhoods with most affected by the NHHIP, up from $27 million in a previous agreement. TX Dot will coordinate with the HHA on creating a process for how the public can weigh in on those fun, how those funds should be used. Probably again the juridic public. But in this article, there's not much else that is of use as far as these go. And that stop TX Dot for I-45 seems like a paid opposition in this case. The meaning fake. Not real opposition. And in a, another article, TX Dot's I-45 expansion project will resume after federal officials resolve civil rights investigations, also by Lucio Vasquez, March 7, 2023, as we read an article from this indiv alleged individual before. Controversial project to expand Interstate I-45 North, which was the subject of a nearly two-year federal civil rights investigation, is set to move forward with several revisions after state and federal transportation leaders agreed to rebuild the highway while taking steps to mitigate impacts on surrounding communities. Now, of course, the question that you would ask, or at least what I would ask, and some others, is why now? And what's up with the two-year delay? These people work together, and they clearly don't care about the impact that they're doing. So why now? What do the dates correlate with? That's a question. Some of us know the answer, but it's a question anyway. Texas Department of Transportation, TxDOT, and the Federal Highway Administration, FHWA, reached an agreement Tuesday allowing the $9.7 billion North Houston Highway Improvement Project, NHHIP, to move forward. The project aims to widen I-45 from downtown north to Beltway 8 in an effort to enhance mobility, according to TexasDOT. And I read that previously in other uh, the other articles and it also talks about the filing of the lawsuit however notice that year there March 2021 correlates to some interesting uh, developments in a particular change of alleged federal leadership just leave that one out there now let's move on to a different part of this topic, and that is who is actually doing the building. A company called Ferro Vial states that the contract includes widening an 11 kilometer stretch to six lanes. The project is located in Walker County, north of Houston. Ferro Vial has an established presence in Texas where it manages the LBJ and NTE highways in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Weber, a Ferrovial Agroman subsidiary, has been selected by the Texas Department of Transportation, TxDOT, to widen a stretch of the I-45 for $119 million or 111 million euro. The contract includes widening a 6.7 mile, 11 kilometer stretch of a highway in Walker County, north of Houston to six travel lanes and replacing bridges frontage roads, and drainage structures. According to TX Dot figures, over 48,000 vehicles use I-45 each day. The project will alleviate congestion on the highway and enhance freight mobility in the area. Built in the early 1960s, I-45 is one of the main evacuation routes for the Houston and Galveston areas. 
Ferro Vial has an established presence in Texas where subsidiary Sintra, that's an interesting company, operates the LBJ Express and North Current Express highways in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. The company has been awarded a number of projects in the U.S. in recent months, including the contract to design, build, finance, operate, and maintain the I-66 in Virginia. Now, notice that. We're going to take a look at that. I-66 in Virginia. Upgrading the I-285 slash SR-400 interchange in Atlanta and building a section of California's high-speed railway network. It has also been chosen to begin negotiations for the Great Hall Redevelopment Project at Denver International Airport. Now, that's interesting. Two things to note. I-66 in Virginia and that they're building a railway. Now, when we look at a map of I-66 in Virginia, we notice that it runs through certain places. Marshall, Haymarket, Gainesville, and some others. So let's go ahead and look at that one right there, Gainesville. Construction of the new 66 express lanes outside the Beltway is now complete. The final section of new lanes opened on November 22nd, 2022. That's 11 22 Providing a total of 22.5 miles of express lanes on Interstate 66 from I-495, the Capitol Bellway, to Route 29, Lee Highway in Gainesville. Two charged with murder in Gainesville fatal shooting. Michael Arthur of Dumfries was shot and killed in a parking lot of the Somerset Point Apartments at about 2 a.m. Prince William County Police. Blah, blah, blah. Man pointing gun at passing motorists in Gainesville shot. An off-duty federal officer shot at man pointing a gun at passing motorists and firing into, into the air in Gainesville on Sunday evening. Now notice these dates. May 13th, 2022, September 26th, 2022. Too many coincidences for it to be an accident. Now let's look at the business filings of this company, which will show a very extensive list of subsidiaries and shell corporations that are located in multiple states and naturally connect to Delaware, as always seems to be the case, the state anyway, which is usually a sign of nefarious activity and money laundering. And among those, we have the Office of the Secretary of State Certificate of Filing for Ferro Vial Services Infrastructure, Inc. in Texas, we also have the Transfield Services Infrastructure, Inc. Foreign Corporation, Jurisdiction, Virginia. Now notice the address is in Houston, Texas. And then we have another filing for Ferro VL Services Infrastructure, Inc. in Texas. Now, a Ferro Carril is a transport uh, by railway or Ferroviario. It's a system of transport of persons and merchandise, or uh, mercancia, guided via a via ferrera, which is like a iron rail. Norm normally, it's understood that the cars and rails are of iron or another metal that make the path or railway through the circulation of trains. Now notice that word, ferrocarril and ferroviaria, kind of like ferrovial. Ferromex is Mexico's is a private rail consortium that operates the largest railway in Mexico with combined mileage 12,100 kilometers as part of the North American Class 1 Railroads. Notice the name 
notice the nature of the expansion project and notice the coordinating circumstances of Gainesville, Huntsville, and Waco, Texas, and the Banditos.